Hi, it's Alex from Groove the Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman with Batman and Robin, Story 6, from 1945. So let's get started. Come on, Pep, the super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman. And today, as Clark Kent, he and Batman are searching the amusement park for Jimmy Olsen, Dick Grayson, and Lois Lane. The startling resemblance of Lois Lane to Dixie Lamar, who was wanted for murder, suggested to Dr. Bly, head man of a confidence ring, a plan whereby Lois would be forced to face the murder charge. Lured to Playland Amusement Park outside Metropolis, Lois disappeared under the eyes of Jim Olsen and Dick Grayson, in reality, Batman's assistant, Robin, while riding in a boat along the River of Horrors. Summoned separately by Jimmy and Robin, Kent and Batman arrived only to find that meanwhile the two boys had also disappeared. But they did spot Dr. Bly, still wearing the dark glasses and white wig in which he was masquerading as Mr. Hemingway, press agent for the amusement park. Kent and Batman gave chase as Bly ducked into the Hall of Mirrors, and as we join them now, they are virtually lost in the maze of mirrored corridors. Oh, we'll never get out of this labyrinth, Kent. Let alone find anyone. Maybe we'd better turn back. Lose that bird with the white hair and dark glasses? He's our only clue. I know, but we seem to be going around in circles. Unless I'm crazy, we've passed that mirror five times. The one that makes you look skinny. It's not the same one. Well, it looks the same. Well, maybe they all look alike to me by now. I'm getting dizzy. Mirrors on the walls, mirrors on the ceiling, even mirrors on the floors. Why people pay admission to come in here, I'll never know. Look out, can't you? are walking right into a mirror. No, no, it's, it's an optical illusion. The car that takes the turns here. Well, you've got better eyes than I have. I'll tell you that. Yeah, there's one trouble. They're not good enough. What do you mean? Well, all these mirrors must be backed with lead in addition to a coating of mercury. I can't see through lead. Well, who can? Well, ordinarily, I... <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm not making much sense, am I? Well, I'm not surprised. This place is my head, spinning like a top. I can't think of it. It won't make sense. Well, we'll be out of it soon. Uh-oh, you better get behind me here. The car is narrow from here on. All right. I suggest we turn back and search the park for Jimmy and Dick. Why? After all, Ken, if we can locate the kids, we shouldn't have too much trouble finding out... Hey! Hey! Batman! Why? Batman! He's gone. Disappeared. Harry just been open and then closed. But where? Can't see through these mirrors. Batman! Robbed of his X-ray vision by what's apparently lead coatings on the backs of the mirrors, Kent is helpless, even as Superman, to locate his suddenly vanished friend. Meanwhile, outside the gates of the amusement park, in a seemingly deserted frame house, the little man with the big ears, Dr. Bly's jitterbug assistant, Happy, is guarding Lois Lane behind the locked door of a room. On a rickety table in one corner, a cheap phonograph is blaring out the rhythmic beats of a jazz piano. Finally, Lois, pacing up and down the room, can't stand it any longer. The least you can do is to stop that phonograph. That banging piano is driving me crazy. You kidding? No, I'm not kidding. That boogie woogie don't set you, chick. You ain't free. It'll send me, all right. Right out of my mind. Turn it off! Okay, okay. Keep your doing all right. That's better. The trouble with your wits, you ain't got no depreciation for solid sentence. I'll take Toscanini if you don't mind. Yeah? Who's he play with? What combo? Never mind. Look, music lover, what gives here? When am I going to get out of this fire trap? You got me, sugar. We're waiting for the big guy. And who is the big guy? You asked me that before, remember? And I told you, Nick, that still goes. Nick. I tell you, a mistake has been made. Truck on down, sit there. There ain't no mistake. The big guy's cutting a mean fruit this time. Both you and the big guy, whoever he is, are going to find yourselves in plenty of hot water. Did you ever hear of assault and battery? I heard of salt and pepper. Oh, very funny. Very funny. Ever hear of kidnapping? You mean putting a snatch on a lug? Crudely, yes. It's punishable by life imprisonment. So unless you want to spend the rest of your days behind bars, you'd better unlock that door and let me out of here. Now, pipe down. And don't tell him I was playing that shy box. He'll catch me in trouble. Open up, Harry. Coming. Uh, what took your shirt off? I was just... Close the door and lock it. Read. Oh. Oh, Miss Lane. That is me, Troy. 
I can't say the feeling is mutual. What's behind all this? Hours of careful planning. Happy. Yeah, boss? With all our iron and trap drum. How come you was puffing so hard? Two men spotted me coming out of the hall of meadows. Quite a time getting away from them. Oh, yeah? You don't recognize me, do you, Miss Stein? I can't say I do. Perhaps if I replace this white wig and dark trousers. <gasps> I'm Mr. Hemingway. Ain't she the slick chick, Doc? Never mind the comments, Abby. Take care of those details at Miss Lane's apartment. Yeah, ma'am. What's the meaning of all this? Why am I being held in this room? And why did you loan me to Playland under false pretenses? Because I need you, desperately. A little plan I have in mind. What is it you want? Money? Perish. Good God. Well, what is it? They should endow you with certain distinctive physical qualities. And the kindly providence led you into my hands. I'm afraid you'll have to explain further. All in good time, Miss Lane. Happy, who's that? You got me, Doc. Stand back by the door. Keep your hand there. Read. Who is it? It's me, Doc. Dixie. Dixie. Burn Happy, stop the lame girl. She's heading for the window. Yeah, not yet. Don't. You let go of me. Let go of me. Let go of me. Struggling to reach the window in an attempt to smash the glass and attract attention, Lois unknowingly is gambling against death with the odds against her. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here is your announcer. Remember the thrill you got last time you found a penny or a nickel? Well, that's the same sort of thrill you get when Mother opens a package of Kellogg's Pep. Because you know there's an exciting prize tucked away inside. Probably one of those swell insignia or warplane buttons you're collecting. Probably one of the second series. These buttons really are honeys, aren't they? The colors are clear and sharp and brilliant. Why, these buttons fairly sparkle when you pin them on your shirt or jacket or cap. Make you look smart. Like the insignia of the Army 370th Bombardment Squadron. That bright golden bomb on a blue background. Or that fiery red dragon riding the black torpedo. That's the insignia of Navy Torpedo Squadron 3. In fact, any one of these buttons is a mighty swell prize to find inside packages of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pet. That's the only way you can get them, you know. You don't send in any money. No, sir, not even a box stop. But every time Mother opens a new package of Pep, you'll say they're mighty swell prizes from Pep, P, E, P, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In a desperate bid to summon help, Lois attempted to reach and smash the window of the room in which she is being held captive by the wily Dr. Bly, but the attempt failed. Roughly handled by Bly's assistant, Happy, Lois is now unconscious, stretched out on a couch as Dr. Bly unlocks the door of the room with Miss Lois's double, Dixie Lamar, the girl who was wanted for murder. What I told you to stay where you are. It got too hot in that phony lighthouse. What do you mean, too hot? Well, two guys in a cop came through the tunnel leading from the River of Horrors. I thought, sure, they were after me, so I beat it. Oh, I had the tunnel to the lighthouse blocked up. I heard him talking plain as day. The, the cop was Riley, the one that hangs around the park. They did go through the tunnel. They took the cut out. That opens out behind the Hall of Mirrors. Maybe. Anyways, I got cold feet, so I hightailed it over here. Nobody saw me. Honest, Doc. Why do I allow myself to become mixed up with such imbeciles? Happy. Yes, Doc? Get a glass of water. Drop this powder into it. Force the water down Miss Lane's throat. Leach. So that's the dame looks like me, huh? With more brains in her little finger than you have between your ears. Oh, yeah? She's going to burn, ain't she? Does that take brains? Don't lead me into any deep discussion to this time, Dixie. I'd like to say some things that might embarrass you. In any event, we haven't time for idle chatter. We have work to do. Important work. Just part that truck, Doc? Yes, all of it. Hey, what's that for? Just a little potion to make certain she's dazed and confused when she awakens. Yeah. Change clothes with her. Change clothes? You heard me. All your clothes. Incidentally, is that the dress you wore when you stupidly shot the Fed religion? Yeah. Good. Comb her hair the way you comb yours. How are you going to work this deal, Doc? Very simply. Once we have Miss Lane dressed in Dixie's clothes, including a mink coat. My and... mink coat? Oh, no. I'm not giving that up. What would you prefer to give up, you little fool? Your mink coat? Or your life. Ah, oh, Doc, please. Give a gal a break. I repeat. Your coat or your life. Don't be a threat, Dixie. Okay. Let her have it. If this scheme works, Dixie, I'll buy you another. You, you heard that, Happy. Yeah. I'm writing it on ice. All right, let's get going now. Dixie, start switching clothes while Happy and I go into the next room to make a phone call. And don't dawdle. Don't what? Don't waste time. Uh, Come on, Happy. Shag it right along, Doc. 
One of these days I'm going to take some time off to teach you the king's English. You don't have to touch. I know he's English. Whoever said ignorance was bliss. I must have been thinking of you, Happy. Gee, thanks, Doc. And what's the load down? As soon as Dixie gets the girl dressed in her clothes, we're going to carry her out of here and sneak her into some dive in downtown Metropolis. That's where the police will find her. And they got to find her. I'll show you. Who are you calling? Listen, you learn. I'm listening. Hello? Metropolis Police Department? Huh? I'd like to speak to Inspector Henderson. Yes, it's important. So just tell him a friend. I'm right on a beat. Hello? Inspector Henderson? You want a girl named Dixie Lamar for murder, don't you? But never mind who this is. Just listen. You'll find Dixie Lamar at the Red Devil Cafe on South Street. I said you'll find Dixie Lamar at the Red Devil Cafe on South Street. Forging the last link in a deadly chain of circumstantial evidence aimed at pinning a murder rap on Lois Lane, the diabolical Dr. Bly tells Inspector Henderson where the false Dixie Lamar can be found. Will Bly's daring plan hold water? Or can Lois free herself from the trap? And what about Batman, lost somewhere in the baffling hall of mirrors? And Jimmy and Dick Grayson? Yes, and Superman, at the moment, helpless and confused. Gang, there's excitement and thrills in every minute from now on, as Lois Lane literally battles for her life. So don't miss it. Tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, and follow the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station. By the makers of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pet. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature appearing in the Superman DC publication. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg's Pep. So that was Superman with Batman and Robin, story six from 1945. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.